Hello, dear friends of Love for Volleyball, Amor por el Volleyball. I have the pleasure to today to talk with an a, a coach with a, a vast experience in, in many countries, I think, Canada and also France. I mean, Julien Boucher, who is currently talking with me today. Hello, Julien. How are you? Thank you, Alfredo. I'm very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. And, and Julien, I, I want to ask you, first of all, please tell me when when, and why did you start um, start to play or, or, or be in part of uh, volleyball in, in your country, Canada? Oh, my God, that's uh, quite a few years ago. I, I hope I can remember everything. Um, well, I grew up playing a lot of sports when I was a young boy in Canada. Like every other Canadian boy, my first sport was ho ice hockey. Um, uh, okay. mm -hmm. And uh, as a player, and now that I started playing hockey, I think I was four or five. Or My dad had bought me a stick and my grandmother had bought me a an old jersey from the Montreal Canadiens, the, the, the pro pro team in Montreal. So yeah. I played hockey, I played baseball, I played soccer. Mm -hmm. um, and my last year of high school, my friend asked me to come to volleyball tryouts. I didn't know much about volleyball, but it was for then it was a social thing for me. All my friends were go, going to try out. So okay. I went and... I made the team and I got, I improved very quickly because I was a, a decent athlete because I had played many sports. Yes. So I got, uh, you know, I fell in love with the sport right away. And then I played a little bit more in college and then uh, a little bit more in university. But uh, I started uh, developing knee problems very early in my career. So I, don't, I also coached. So at, at, at one point, I only coached. I, I stopped playing. And then I coached uh, locally in the, in the province of Quebec. I coached at the university in Western Canada, New China. I was the assistant coach for the men's national team uh, at the Barcelona Olympics. I did that for six years. And then I coached in France. Then I, come, I came back to Canada and uh, I got hired as a technical director with a provincial association mm -hmm. in Ontario. And then I did the same thing for the province of Quebec. In Canada, you know, Canada Canada is divided in 10 provinces and each province has its own volleyball federation. Okay. So I worked for I worked for two of them mm -hmm. and then eventually I started working for Volleyball Canada back in 2007. So it's all almost 16 years now. Okay, I'm with volleyball Canada. And when did you, you did you start thinking um, about uh, to be um, a coach, or, or, or when did you, or why did you um, um, start thinking? Okay, volleyball. I like. I love volleyball. I want to make my life in volleyball. To be a coach. To be part of of, of, mm -hmm. of federation. Why did you choose this 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 way of life? Well. It's a combination of a couple of things. One is I really love volleyball right mm -hmm. from the start. Okay. And even before I started playing volleyball, I started coaching. I started coaching okay. very young. Yeah. I knew that I was going to go to university and study in physical education to eventually become a teacher. Okay. So I guess it was within me to teach other people and uh, eventually coach in volleyball and give back to other people what volleyball had given me. So I coached uh, I coached baseball, I coached soccer, and then once I started getting more familiar with volleyball by playing, then I started coaching volleyball. It was um, it was almost as a volunteer first. Okay. Um, although I was coaching pretty pretty good teams, pretty good athletes in the Montreal area. Yeah. Um, under under 20 or under 21 so and then when i my team started getting better and we won two national championships mm -hmm. that's back in the early 80s um i knew that i wanted to coach full time okay so i had started teaching in a school in mm -hmm. quebec yeah and at a certain point i stopped teaching i didn't work full time for one year and then eventually i got a full time job in coaching so I knew quite early that I wanted to coach. And then not so long after that, I knew that I wanted to coach and do only that. 
Okay. You have, a, um, as I told the, in the beginning of the, this interview, a vast experience in many, many clubs, universities, um, mm -hmm. um, um, national teams. How is it for you until now um, to be um, a part of, of the, the volleyball in Canada? Because I, I, I the, the, the first thing um, when I, I knew that, that in Canada you have a great volleyball culture, was in the Montreal Olympic Games in 1976. Yes. I have um, today we um, we can see and watch a lot of games via YouTube from this Olympic mm -hmm. Games. I have the opportunity to interview some of the players from this final, from the Russian team, from the the Polish. Not yet. No, no, no. But I will soon. I hope. But um, yes. for me, it, it was very interesting to 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 watch this game because volleyball. Um, was uh, evolving volleyball um, uh, what I can I can see in photos on videos was very very interesting very very beautiful in this time how was it was it for you to be I think you you you, you have um, seen this or maybe you was in, in, in that Olympic game um to be um, um, to understand that volleyball in Canada have so long history so in so important history in, in, in the Olympic Games uh, a long history. Yes, that's true. Um, 76 was uh, the first time that Canada played in the Olympics, mm -hmm. um, obviously, because we were hosting. And it's actually, I hadn't been involved in volleyball for that long at the Montreal Olympics. And I was living in Montreal. Okay. And I had a friend, I had a friend that uh, was a volunteer at the training venue. So he got me, he, he could let me in and I could watch any team practice. And uh, I was lucky enough to get tickets to the final okay. to see Poland versus USSR, yes. the, the famous the famous match mm -hmm. um, in the final that Poland won in five, and that was pretty much the the turning point for me. And I, you know, I was thinking at that time, well, one day I want to be involved at that level, and I was lucky enough to be at the right place at the right time at different times during my career that I ended up going back to the Olympics with Team Canada and in 92 as a coach yes. and 2016 and 2020 with um, as a team uh, as a team leader so I was I was very lucky it's very interesting also for me um to see how Canada can uh, uh, um, participate in, in Olympic Games and World Championships and Pan American Games and and all and always with great teams. Um, for example, I, I remember the team from from Los Angeles with, uh, um, for example, yes. players like uh, Paul Gratton. I remember um, Glenn Hawk. I think Glenn Hawk, yes. uh, his son also plays in the national team or play or was a player. So I I, I always have watched. Um, so strong Canadian teams, male Canadian teams, participating in the Olympics and all the the most important oh. tournaments around the world, and and you are part of this. Please tell me how um, um, was your beginning in the national team, and how was your 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 your, your vision to do um, uh, always better better work, better work to to and, and to improve your your level in in the international tournaments. Well, it started back when I was coaching. I was lucky enough to be hired as the the very first full time assistant coach with the okay. with the men's team back in it was nineteen eighty six. Okay. The team, uh, the national team center was in Calgary then, so I moved there. And um, you know, it was a matter of at that time we didn't have that many players that played in professional leagues okay. as yeah. you may know Canada doesn't have a pro league so mm -hmm. right now all our players are playing around the world because exactly. we have no competition structure for them but mm -hmm. then, at that time it was just beginning yeah. and so we had all our players together all year round so for us it, it was a plus um, I think that you know we've We've always been considered as a, a shorter team in volleyball, even now, I think. But we've always Canadians are have the reputation to be really hard worker, and yes. we we we've always had really good athletes on mm -hmm. our program, and we we make a point of selecting, and that's that's never really changed over the years. We like 
selecting the, the players that are good athletes because mm -hmm. we're not as tall, so we need to be more mobile. We need to be agile. We gotta be. We have to be quick. So mm -hmm. um, that's a little bit the way we've approached. We've always approached the the, the selection of our players. Um, you know, we, we compensate a little bit due to the lack of a professional league. Mm -hmm. uh, the top the top level in Canada is university. Yes. Um, and there's quite a bit of a gap between the level of the top players at the university and the international uh, level. So mm -hmm. um, we we need to work on bridging that gap. Yes. Uh, all the way through. We always have, and I have a feeling that we always we always will. But so far, it's paid its dividends and, you know, hard work and making sure that we have the right people around to support these athletes, like the right the right staff, the right coaches and the right support staff, the medical staff. So we've, we've for us, that's very important, not just the playing on the field, but all the support to the athletes on and off the court. Absolutely. Um... I also have the the opportunity to 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 interview many many players and coaches um, from the world around the world, mm -hmm. um, historical actually trainers or players, and for me it's it's a privilege and and to know um, sometimes things you don't see in the in the court the the the, yeah. the, the backstage um, things of mm -hmm. the of volleyball in, in different countries and and I I, I wonder. What what what's happening in Canada? You you, you told me that um, ice hockey is very important, or, or, or is the, the 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 like in South America the soccer um, game is, is the most important mm -hmm. sport for, for for the media for for the crowd yeah. in Canada. Um, you told me uh, ice hockey is one or maybe the, the the number one sport. And and how is uh, um, volleyball in Canada? Is it a, a popular sport? Um, the 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 the, the the people um, love volleyball as you or, or, or I, or, or, or it's a it's a it's a not so important um, sport. So um, 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 for thinking to be more popular or, or be uh, more successful and in, in, in internationally. Yes. Well, let me go back for a second here. Ice hockey is not the number one sport. Ice huh. hockey, ice hockey is a religion in, in, <laughs> okay. in, in Canada. <laughs> So that does, it doesn't count. No, um, and to answer and to answer your question, mm. volleyball is popular. It's one of the most uh, one of the sports with the most participation. Okay. But that includes recreational yeah. adults, uh, you know, beach volleyball, outdoor volleyball, and indoor volleyball. Yeah. Um, but it's the problem that we have. It's not mediatized, like we. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> what people want to watch in North America are the pros and the, you know, the basketball and yes. hockey, yes. obviously, mm -hmm. and baseball and American football. But volleyball is not a mediatized sport, so we're kind of at the mercy of that. And I mean, we're trying to change it. Like when both our men's and women's teams now are in the the, the VNL or Nations yes. League, mm -hmm. so it gives a chance to the people of Canada, the volleyball community in Canada, to see their national team on TV or on the web, uh, whatever platform they want to watch on. So, but it's it's never been really a, a very mediatized sports with stars that you can see in the street and recognize, you know, as opposed to hockey players or in certain countries, volleyball, like Poland or Brazil or Japan, Japanese volleyball yes. players, Polish volleyball stars. Yeah. players walk walk down mm. the street and people recognize them. In yes. Canada, it's not like that. Okay. Mm. So, so we need to create, um, you know, a, a vision of our program to the volleyball community to make sure that we attract uh, the young boys and the young girls within our pathway, within our system, mm. for them to know. Oh man. I want to do that. I want to be. I want to become a pro player, and so we have to work really hard at that as well. Yes, yes. Um, I talk also with uh, Nanu Mania. Um, he's a Chilean who lives many, many years in Canada, have his made his life in Canada, and also with Melissa, his daughter, um, the world championship in beach volleyball. Mm -hmm. And 
they told me ab about um, something um, a, a little strange for me because um, and, and, and you're confirming that in Canada you, you don't have a, a professional league um, so no. today the, the players the good players plays um, outside Canada but yeah. I remember also have been um, have to um, talk with uh, for example some players and, and coaches from from Netherlands they told me in the 80s that they didn't have also a, a, a professional a national mm -hmm. league and so the, the 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 best players go outside to improve their, yeah. their, their skills um and they and they achieved the gold medal in in, in the in the 90s were right. one of the f five or three best teams in, in the history in that years um why why, why do you do you think that Canada and, and other teams that you have to um, um coach it didn't um, um have the, the 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 chance to go to the best teams in the world um, um, you have the the great athletes and you don't yeah. have um, problems with with the size of, of the uh, you have tall players i think you have resources or 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 um, um, support from the state or from the uh, from the right. federation i don't know but what why do, do you think or, 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 or what is still missing to to to, to get to get to the next step why why do you think it, um, it's so and um, and via um, via my appreciation appreciation and um, why Canada can um, not achieve a, a medal having all for doing this yeah well it's uh, it's a good question I wish I I knew the answer a hundred percent I I know it, 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 it's a little tricky because I, I I I'm sure that you work very hard for 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 yes. decades to do to to do this. But mm -hmm. sometimes I, I I watch the the Canadian team play and I think okay they they play like Italy they play like Russia but why why didn't you 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 win sometimes in the in the in, in the World Championship and Olympics why what is missing? Well, it's I think it's a combination of different things. One is because of the size of our country and um, you know the fact that we don't have a national league mm -hmm. the depth of our of our teams like the number of players that we can count on at the top level is i would say lower compared to a lot of other countries like Poland or France or the USA we we're yes. a, we're a large country geographically but we're a small country in terms of number of people okay um It's only 35 million people in Canada. The number of people in the country is not always the main factor for everybody. Look at Slovenia. Yes. Slovenia has 2 million people, and they're <laughs> one of the top teams in the world, the men's team. So we, we need to work at the same time as we're working at the top of the pyramid of our development system with the yeah. senior national team and sometimes the B team. We also want to make sure that we're increasing the bottom of the pyramid that we can choose more and more players eventually on our senior national team. Okay. So that's been, that's been a, a really big focus of ours. Mm -hmm. um, I think on the, on the men's side, uh, I think we're close. Yeah. It's just a matter of, you know, having the, like we say, having the stars aligned and keeping, keeping our spot in the, the nation's league in, um, You know, making sure that uh, we take care of of the athletes that we are able to count on, and make sure they're healthy. and And then, same thing for the women are a little bit behind our men, but have gone have gone through um, quite a bit, yeah. uh, quite a nice progress over the yeah, last couple absolutely. of years. Absolutely. But the women face the same problem. We're not deep. We don't have 18 players that could play in any given competition and the yes. result would almost be the same. Our uh, women's coach keeps saying that last year at World Championships we were one injury away mm -hmm. of not making it to the top 16 mm -hmm. and but we ended up finishing 10th which was the greatest result we've ever had on the women's side. Yes. So yeah. it's for us it's small steps mm -hmm. and I think we need to To, to be very good at supporting the players and we need to be very good at identifying where the gap is between ourselves and the top 10 countries in the world and, you know, having to, you know, focusing on the, the main, 
the main events and the main times that we're going to play them, you know, to, to be able to win an Olympics or win a, a world championships, you don't have to beat the top teams every single time you play them. You have to beat them once when it counts. Yes. <laughs> right. So for, I think we're, we're in that sense, we're close mm -hmm. and, um, we can only keep uh, working hard and working well. It's not just working hard. You got to work well. Yes. Um, and eventually, I think the, um, it will pay dividends. Yes. And, and, and until now, um, which championship has been the most um, remembered for you, or maybe the most um, important or the most um, significant for you? Was the Barcelona, or, 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 or do you have some some other um, big championship you remember um, with with uh, a finish, well, example? Per personally, I think the. <laughs> The first time I was part of a team that qualified for the Olympics, mm -hmm. so that was 1991. It was a little bit easier to qualify for the Olympics then because in our zone, USA and Cuba were the two strongest teams, yes. and they'd already qualified. So our our zone championship, we had to beat Mexico, which we did. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was that's a great memory for me, and 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 I think for our program. Um, Well, I shouldn't say that for our program. For me personally, the the next one would be beating the the USA at the at the opening match in the Rio Olympics. Hmm. That was uh, that was great feeling. Yes, absolutely. The, <laughs> the USA the USA has always been our uh, our obvious competitor, you know. Yes. So, and historically, we had lost to them way more than we had beaten them. So, beating them. At the first match in the Olympics, that was for us. That was a great achievement, and it it shows you what I just told you earlier. We we almost never won against the USA, but that one match we ended up winning, and that's what created the momentum for us. And we ended up uh, losing to Russia in in the, in the quarterfinals, but finishing fifth at the Olympics when you haven't qualified for twenty some years, it's uh, it's a pretty good achievement. It's a big thing, and and I also re remember when you beat it, the, the the Cuban team for for Tokyo and five sets mm -hmm. and at, at mm -hmm. home. Uh, yes, that was a great, a great match. Great, a great match, and um, I also love to see that the 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 the, the, the gymnasium um, absolutely full with with the crowd supporting the team. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful to see. It's it's very emotional for for me as an old player. Um, yeah. A uh, uh, nostalgic player from 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 the eighties. So mm. it's it, 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 it's it's uh, as you say. Um, sometimes it's one match. It's one opportunity. And and mm -hmm. I think that the for example the the male team, the national team, the senior team has um, half the 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 ch the chances to 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 go to go up. I I hope this. And and, and mm. tell me about um about your your long experience. You you went um. Some yes to France. How 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 was um, th this experience for you? Um, to be um, a trainer in in if I'm not wrong in Turcoing Little Metropole. <laughs> I don't correct. know. Okay. Yes, that is correct. My French, my French um, is very bad. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, well, it was for me. It was a great experience. It was uh, I coached um, at the university level, and I coached with the national team. And logically, in my In my career path, I wanted to coach in a professional league. And um, what I did is after I finished, or just as I was finishing my contract with the Canadian team in, in 92, I sent out CVs to all the clubs in, okay. in France. At that time, you had to mail and, them because there was no email. And why France did, 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 did well, you send your CV? That's how I started. Because for me, it's natural because I'm a French-Canadian. So Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clear. Okay. It, it was kind of a natural pathway for yes. me. Um, so, and one club ended up replying to my uh, letters and um, they interviewed me. Yeah. They brought me over, but they still had one year of contract with the with the coach that was there at the time. Mm -hmm. But I, I ended up signing a contract for the season after. And then that's how I went. And then I signed for two more years after that. And I... I finished in 1998 and I came back to Canada. Um, 
I mean, it was a great experience. You know, when you're involved in clubs or even university mm -hmm. <clears throat> coaching in Canada, you have to do, you cannot only just be a coach. You have to be, you have to try and get some money from fundraise and you have to take care of your athletes because they're, they're students and you have to do so many things. But when I went to France, all I did was coach. Okay. And for me, that was great. Uh, So it, I really enjoyed it, and I, the club I was in was a very good club. Mm -hmm. um, the best season we had, we finished um, fifth in the league. Uh, we we lost in the final of the French Cup. Mm -hmm. um, I remember against Cam, Philippe Blain was coaching, mm -hmm. and he was, there was a Canadian that I coached with Canada that was playing for Cam. Okay. <laughs> I still haven't. I still haven't <laughs> forgiven them. <laughs> And Julian, tell me please, um, what's your your opinion about today's volleyball? Because um, uh, we both played in, in the eighties. We started to play in, in a very different volleyball as today, with many uh, so different rules as we have today. Um, even mm -hmm. even even that that the coach is standing beside the court. It, it, for me, it, it, it's very strange. I have. Back pain, so when I sometimes I'm coaching my teams for my friends, I sit <laughs> as the old ways. But for, for you, how is your opinion about today's volleyball, about the rules, about the way that, that the teams are playing? Do you think volleyball needs more changes? It's okay um, right now. How what what is your opinion about this, please? Well, it's it's since I started getting involved, obviously the game has changed in in the in the aspect of mostly The players, the players are taller, they're stronger, and that can be explained by the fact that now there's, you know, more science attached to the sport, mm -hmm. like analytics with yes. uh, volume station, volumetrics, and so mm -hmm. on. There's uh, way more um, importance put on sports science, you know, nutrition, uh, strength and conditioning, um, psychological development as well so the players are are better supported the game itself um is has evolved as well but now for the last few years to me it's kind of stagnating mm -hmm. um everybody plays the same way and um yes, yes. I, i'm not sure i have a vision to what it could look like mm -hmm. um obviously You know, human nature has that 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 fact that nobody likes to change, right? It's inherent to the to the human uh, the human. And um, I mean, all the rule changes that have been put put forth with by the FIVB is are changes that are meant to make the sport more marketable, more enjoyable from the from the fan. Yes. So, and that's okay. Um, now I hear there might be another rule change coming up after 2024 that's being tested right now okay. at the youth level is the, the not being allowed to serve receive with your fingers. Oh. So that will, that will change a little bit as well, probably on the serve receiving side and the serving side. So we'll see where that goes. I'm not sure. I agree with that, but we'll see. I mean, the FIVB relies on, um, you know, experts to make these decisions. So yeah. we're not going to question them and uh, we'll see where it goes. It's being tested actually as we speak right now. There's a U19 event going on in Guatemala. Okay. It's the U19 mm -hmm. uh, Continental Championship. I haven't seen any matches yet, so I can't tell you what it looks like, but... The, that rule is being um, is being uh, applied at at tournament right now, and it, I know. Yes. Sorry. No, excuse me. Uh, and I know it will be it would it will be applied at all the youth age group world championships this mm. year. It's it's very interesting what you're saying because I, I remember um, I played in in as a, as a senior over over 40 years or. Um, mm -hmm. In Chile, um, some years ago, and I, I rem remember one year. I don't remember which year, 
they make the, the, the same um, um, modification as, as, you, as you're telling right now. Um, you couldn't mm -hmm. receive the fingers. And yeah. I, it was very, 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 very surprising that we, the old players, could receive absolutely fine with mm -hmm. no problems. But the young players couldn't receive without the fingers. It was, it was very stunning for us to yeah. watch them. And they couldn't receive, and, and, and they told us, "How do you receive without the fingers?" The, and, and it was very interesting to 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 watch them play because they they started today um, almost um, the, the receive with the fingers. Um, we make this this uh, gesture to to, right. to to catch the ball when it uh, a little higher. So it, it's interesting what you're saying, and 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 I wanted to ask you um, also about. Um, You you told me right now that the, the about the that today many great teams or or, or the, the most important teams plays very similar. Um, yes. In the eighties and the seventies we we could see the, the the Japanese school of volleyball, the Russian volleyball oh. school, the Brazilian. Exactly. I don't know. And and today we we if you watch Canada, Cuba, Russia, Brazil, they all plays very similar sometimes you see um, some players um, a little different for example in Gapet in France um, yeah, yeah. or Bruninho in Brazil and, and Bruninho make a, a, a with with the uh, Lucao who's a middle blocker it, it, some but it, it's a, very few things um uh, versus a volleyball that um today is very similar um, um, why why do you think it's so because of um, maybe uh, of the size of the players of the power of the, of the volleyball today or, or do you think um, um if you could cho choose to play for example with more um um uh, uh, plays in uh, as in the in, in the past for example i don't know how how to say it in english um i am um, The middle blocker goes fast. The the outside hitter goes behind the be, be, yes. him with, with, with so many combinations of volleyball. And what 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 your thoughts about this? Well, you, there was a time not so long ago where you, that's if I understand what you're describing, it's called stack blocking. So you have the instead yeah. of having three blockers <laughs> side by side, exactly. you have them stacked at the net. And mm -hmm. one follows. It's almost follows like a, plays. exactly a, a, a man to man defense in American football. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite a few teams that started uh, applying that when they played, and then they went away from it just because the game became faster and it was impossible if you're not already at the net mm -hmm. to get to a blocking position on time. So that was kind of um, that became obsolete. Yes. Um, you know, I I don't know. I, I'm not sure I can answer that. It's um, until someone who's really innovative uh, creates something. Um, you know, for instance, you compare men and women's volleyball. Mm -hmm. uh, it's up to a point now that even women's volleyball is not is not change is not evolving all that much, mm -hmm. except for the fact that women's volleyball is looking more and more like men's volleyball. Absolutely, Because the athletes yeah. are powerful mm -hmm. and they're fast and they're, the power they're high. You, yes, you know, mm -hmm. you, and athletes like Boscovic with Serbia and her bots with uh, Belgium and um, going from so, Italy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the, the women are getting to be so powerful mm -hmm. that you you watch a volleyball, a women's match, and it's almost like you're watching a men's match. You know, you're um, right. The, the only difference between the two men and women is still the 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 step around and if i'm if i'm not mistaken you even see that less and less now yes it's, it's just coming in straight straight mm. in the middle straight on the outside on both sides and you know um again to go back to your original question and my original answer i'm mm -hmm. i'm not sure how What is going to be? What's needed to for the game to to change beyond what we're seeing today? Yes, it's it's a for me it's a very um, a powerful uh, question to to think about. For example, mm -hmm. I I talked with Giovanni Gavio from Brazil, and he yeah. told me that he wanted to to change this. He, he, it's a it's a project for him. He wanted to change this because he told me that the, the, the same as we we're, we're speaking. 
he, he, he told me that volleyball today is very similar, that the middle blockers only attacked him from, from the middle, the outside mm-hmm. hitter, only outside hitter, or sometimes, <coughs> sometimes a, a pipe from behind the three meter lines. And he plays in the time uh, as, as I do did. And when the middle blockers um, attacked from behind, a middle block attacked from, from yes. in second, in second time. So maybe, maybe um, when I see, for example, the Canadian team play, playing, I, I think, why did, did they play like the other teams? Why um, um, did they play um, as the Canadian team and in, 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 in involve their own um, um, school of volleyball? It's Excuse me, it's my own 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 thoughts about volleyball. But I, I watched the, the Canadian team, for example, today, and I see so great players, so powerful players. But it's my opinion. Is, um, they play like the, like the like the other teams with 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 many systems very similar. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I'm not in the court with you. You're you're you're, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. doing the job. Um, you're an expert in in in, in what you're doing, but. Sometimes I, I I have these thoughts and, and and I think maybe it it could be possible to to change some 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 matches and, and playing different or or, or or it's impossible um mm. as we speak because of of the of the size of the power of the, of the of the of the of the games today. Well, that's you know it, that's more a question for our coaches. Mm. You know, it's um the, I can't I can't speak for them. I think we play the game that our coaching staff feels that we can play with the players that we have yes. with the, with the, um, with the constraints that we have and with mm-hmm. the, the strengths that we have and the weaknesses. And we try to balance that. And what you see on the court is the product of a lot of reflection by, by our, um, I know. It, it's my own crazy. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 But it's, it's, about yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> any, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion, and may, maybe you're right. Maybe a few years down the road, we'll remember this conversation and we'll be playing differently. And oh, yeah, Alfredo was right. See, <laughs> yeah, well, volleyball it's a passion for me, for mm-hmm. you know, for many, many um, um, persons around the world, and I have the the um, the joy to to um, um, gain every day more uh, followers in my. My channels and YouTube and Facebook and um, Instagram, it's for me a, a joy and, and also a, a joy to to be able to to um, can uh, speak with people like you or people from Brazil, the the, the, oh. the generation of gold, the generation of, of silver, or players from Russia, um, Argentina. For me, it's a dream come true. When I was a, a young player in Chile. We look over the, our cordillera, our mountains, and we dreamed to to play like the Argentine and to to smash like Raúl Quiroga, to be fast like like Bernard Rachman, or to defense like Karch Kirli. But today I have I have the, the, the this fantastic opportunity to, and thanks to technology, to to speak with them, speak with you, yeah. in Canada. For me, it, it it it's incredible. Sometimes it's a, 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 a little crazy because. <laughs> Um, in my house, the all things I that I'm mad for volleyball, but um, I love to to have this the speeches, this conversation because um, I love history of volleyball. I love what um, yes. volleyball is doing today, and and I I wanted for many years to speak with somebody from Canada. Um, as I told you, I, I have seen many mm-hmm. teams in in all these years. So for me, it, it's a great pleasure, and also. For me, it's a great to to and I, I, one of my goals um, that many young players from today um, can see um, that volleyball um, have a great history. I um, have uh, also the chances to to talk with players, especially in Chile, that players in, in the fifties, for example, or the sixties, um, mm-hmm. and there was volleyball in this time. So it's it's it's, it's so great for me, and and also. Um, I, as we speak outside the camera, I, I am I'm, I'm thanking you for you, for your time, for your 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 great um, uh, motivation to speak with me, um, because I think you, you what you have done and what you're doing is important for for volleyball, not also not only in Canada. I think for, for yes, volleyball um, all around the world. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. sure of it. So did you did you ever play with Hernan? Well. Did you, did no, you no, no. Is... no. Enan is is older than me, and he plays okay. with, a, with an uncle. 
And this uncle, um, when we was, were lunching oh, okay. or, or at, at dinner, he told me about the, the legendary Flaco Mania. And he told mm -hmm. me about the Flaco Mania. And I, I could watch him play in uh, South American Championship in Chile in 1981. Mm -hmm. the, and, and Chile won the, the bronze medal. And this team, for me and many of my generation, was um, an inspiration to play volleyball. So um, that's because the El, El Flaco Umaña, it's a legend here in Chile, a, a very, very remembered and, 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 and uh, loved person. Um, that that's for me volleyball. That's it, it's my my, mm -hmm. my 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 thoughts in volleyball, and, and I wanted to to um, speak with you, Julian. And I wanted to to ask you finally, um, what's your next um, steps in volleyball, or what's your next um, projects with with Canada and and um, for the Olympics, for the national, for Vinel? What are, are your mm -hmm. next project in in volleyball? Well, it's um, the next projects are pretty much the same as the old projects. You mm -hmm. know, we want to for the men's team, we want to keep qualifying for the Olympics. And personally mm -hmm. for me, I would like to see our women's team qualify for the Olympics. And mm -hmm. two, two years ago, you would have asked me what our chances were to qualify for Paris. And I would have said maybe 10% or 15%. But after the year that we had last summer, I think it's quite a bit higher. So I'm hoping that it, it could be Paris, but I'm hoping at least LA will be Our, our pro our women's program is going to keep growing to to uh, be able to secure us a qualification for Los Angeles. I think for us and for a lot of countries, you know, success of a program revolves around participation in the Olympics and mm -hmm. you know World Championships as well. But the Olympics is such a an yeah. event on its own. You know, it's Absolutely. it's not about It's not about volleyball. It's about the world coming together. Yes. And it's such under the public eye every every four years that, you know, it's it's a dream for everyone to be in the Olympics. And yes. Yes. When 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 you've been there once, then you want to be there a second time <laughs> and a third time if you're if you're f physically fit enough. So hopefully, I'll still be physically fit enough to be able to go to Paris and in Los Angeles. Fantastic. And and, I, I and, so. and then mm -hmm. and then the pro my project after that will probably to work on my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> so great, great to know. And and, and I hope um, and you will achieve your 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 objectives to go to Paris. Hopefully hopefully both female and, and the male team. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I, The female team, I have watched them play. They play very, very, very well. They have a powerful team, a high team. Um, yeah. I, I hope it, it will be um, a possibility. Um, for Olympics, for volleyball, it's the highlights of, of, of our sport. Mm -hmm. In soccer, it, it's the world championship. But in volleyball, it, it's the highlight to be part of, of Olympics. Um Julian, I, I want to, do, to to thank you again for your time, for your 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 motivation to speak with me about volleyball, your thoughts about mm -hmm. volleyball, about your experience. Um, I want to send you a big hug from Chile. We are far, far away from, from Canada. Right back, right back at you, Alfredo. And mm -hmm. thank you for all the good work you do. I'll keep following you on uh, on Instagram and uh, Facebook. And I love seeing those old photos. It's my my. My childhood. Most of them are my childhood. I know, I know. And, and so, I want to, to invite you to to if you have some photos or many photos. Yes, yes. Send me, send me many you can because I'm, yeah. um, when I started to 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 make the Amor Pro Volleyball and, and firstly in Facebook, I started with photos that my father have because we lived in Germany. He was a coach, a coach ah, okay. in, in Germany, so he brought many many um, magazines from Germany to Chile. So I have I have these magazines. I, I I take the pictures and I post it in in Facebook. But um, month after month, year after year, I, I thought that many I, I saw that many great players um, began to follow my my pages. Um, Raúl Quiroga, um, um, Ben Rahman, the great uh, Alexander Savin from Russia. It was very crazy. 
And then, and today, I received many photos and videos from them. So for me, it's, it, yeah. it, as I told you, a dream come true. So if you have photos, send me all of them. So I, I right. post them because I think it's important that our history can be a, 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 a posted and, 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 and honored for, for, for the next generation. And that is yes. um, one of my, my biggest goals. All right. Well, thank you for having me up, Fredo. And uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch. Bye thank bye you so much. Many thanks. Bye. Thank you.